In this presentation, we're going to go over some general guidelines and tips on how to complete the Health Equity Impact Assessment Tool. In addition to this Prezi that you're watching right now, you can check out some of our other videos where we talk about the Health Equity Lens in greater detail and why we can use tools such as the HIA to understand the imp equity impacts of our programs and policies. The links to these videos can be found on the Community of Interest site. The HEIA tool was developed by Ontario's Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care in collaboration with local health integration networks and Public Health Ontario. The Ministry developed this tool to help people I identify the unintended potential health impacts of an initiative, policy, or program on vulnerable or marginalized groups. The tool can also help you to develop recommendations as to how you can modify your program or policies to really take into consideration the health equity lens. Other objectives of the tool include a, as a way to embed equity across the organization's decision-making models to create support and raise awareness about health equity. As you may already know, the HEIA tool includes five steps, scoping, identify impacts, mitigation, monitoring, and dissemination. But before we dive into these steps, you might be wondering where you can collect the necessary information and data needed to complete the HEIA. One of the first places we might look for information is the literature. Here we will talk about two databases that may be helpful when you carry out your literature search. The TRIP database is a federated search engine that searches multiple sources. The Canadian Best Practices portal includes Canadian data, strategies, and links to some systematic reviews. Health Evidence is a registry of systematic reviews on the effectiveness of public health and health promotion interventions. The Guide to Community Preventive Services is an evidence-based resource of recommendations from systematic reviews of public health in interventions. Lastly, the NICE database contains documents for public health that include recommendations and full supporting reviews. The literature can be a rich resource for the data that you are looking for but it is important to keep in mind that the literature is not your only source of information. Take advantage of your own network of team members, colleagues, and managers. Based on their work experiences, these people can have important insights to share that you can use to complete the AGIA tool. You may also come across people who have already used the assessment tool and are willing to share their lessons and recommendations. You can also consider touching base with people outside of your own department or agency for their input. Another rich source of information can be the population groups that you've identified through your scoping phase. Involving the population groups early in the completion of the Health Equity Impact Assessment can ensure that the mitigation strategies that you've identified will be effective in addressing the health equity issues faced by those groups. You can conduct key informant interviews, focus groups, and surveys with them. You can also connect with organizations and advocacy groups that directly work with those populations. A combination of the literature along with consultations with internal staff members and the population groups you've identified will provide you with the information you need to complete the Health Equity Impact Assessment. Sometimes you might not have all the information that you need to complete one of the steps, but don't stop there. In the HIA template, make a note that you need more information and keep moving forward with the next step. Now let's jump back into the specific steps of the HEIA tool. The first step is scoping. In this step, you have to think about the population groups and the determinants of health. When you are identifying the population groups, think about which populations may experience significant unintended health impacts as a result of the planned policy program or initiative. Examples of the population groups include Aboriginal peoples, disability, Francophone, homeless, or religious or faith-based communities. It is also important to consider intersecting populations. For example, low-income older immigrant women may face greater health-related disadvantages. The second part of scoping is to identify the determinants of health. In other words, what are the underlying factors that may be influencing the health of the population groups? Examples of determinants of health include income, social support networks, education, employment, etc. You can find a more detailed list of determinants of health at the Public Health Agency of Canada website that is shown here. 
The next step is to identify the unintended impacts. In this step, you want to consider both the unintended positive and negative health impacts of your program, policy, or initiative. Think about the positive impacts of your initiatives that enhance health equity and negative impacts that contribute to maintaining health disparities in the identified population groups. If you are unsure of the positive and negative impacts, consider what more information you need to complete this step. After you have identified the unintended impacts, think about the mitigation strategies that will maximize the positive impacts and minimize the negative impacts of your program or policy. For example, think about how to reduce or eliminate barriers to access related to factors such as transportation, childcare, or language. At this stage, it is important to keep in mind the feasibility of the mitigation strategies that you have identified. Think about the resources that you will need to implement these mitigation strategies. Consider factors such as funding, support from senior level decision makers, and staff commitment. If you have identified a long list of mitigation strategies, you may want to prioritize these strategies based on feasibility or the degree to which these strategies are actually addressing the unintended impacts. Don't forget, feedback from the identified population groups may be highly beneficial at this step. After the mitigation strategies have been implemented, you need to think about monitoring. In other words, how will you measure the success of your mitigation strategies in reducing health inequities? If you already have an evaluation plan for your program or policy, you can also integrate the monitoring strategy into this overall evaluation plan. The last step of the HEIA tool is dissemination. Through this process, you and your team have gained new knowledge about health inequities and now it's time to share that information with others. Talk about what you found through the completion of the HIA tool, the challenges you faced, and the recommendations you have for modifying the program or policy. Share this information with senior level decision makers, other staff members, the identified population groups, and anyone else you can think of. Remember that the Health Equity Impact Assessment is a living document. In other words, as you move forward with each step, keep coming back to the template and update the information as needed. After you've implemented your mitigation strategies, reflect on the changes that were made to the program or policy and how those changes contributed to health equity. And that's it. After you've completed your health equity impact assessment, share your story with others who are interested in using the tool. Take advantage of some of the resources available here on the Community of Interest site, and don't hesitate to connect with members of the COI with your questions and concerns. The bottom line is the best way to learn how to do a health equity impact assessment is to do a health equity impact assessment. So go out there, do one, and good luck.